This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 10, Section 1, Chemical Quantities. So repeat after me those vocab words. Avogadro's hypothesis. Avogadro's number. Empirical formula. Molar mass. Molar volume. Mole. And yes, it's abbreviated M-O-L. They just kick off the E. Percent composition. Representative particle standard temperature and pressure and yes it's abbreviated as STP so just as always you're going to watch the rest of the video and then define the terms by either going through the chapter or looking in the um, glossary in the back of your book and yes you'll have that matching quiz in the near future so section one is on the mole hmm a measurement of matter so it's just another way of measuring something so in this section you're going to describe methods of measuring the amount of something you're going to define Avogadro's number as it relates to a mole of a substance you're going to distinguish between the atomic mass of an element and its molar mass and you're going to describe how the mass of a mole of a compound is calculated so you should have watched that intro information on mole conversion Versions. Here are my notes. Yes, the mole is a furry creature, but really in chemistry it comes from the word molecule. So why do we use it? Well, chemists like to deal with very, very small things like atoms, and so it's going to be a very usable amount. And it's going to be another unit, just like one day you learned that a dozen of eggs means 12, or that there are 12 inches in one foot. Hmm, at some point you learned about those two units and how they're compared compared to each other. So the same thing here, a mole is another unit that represents this number 6.02, 2 times 10 to the 23rd. He hopes that by the end of the video you can take 200 milliliters, which equals 200 uh, grams of water, and convert it into molecules of water. So he gave you an example about what a dozen is, right, the amount of eggs, and he gave you two conversions that he deals with and how to convert eggs to dozen and eggs to ounces. So then he did those uh, conversions for you. He did the same thing then with the mole, because a mole is the amount of a chemical. So he talked about the formula mass in grams, and he also talked about particles. We are going to go a step further and also talk about 22.4 liters of gas. So we'll talk about that as well. So he did some conversions. He talked about finding the formula mass or the molar mass of substances when you need to. And then he did those conversions for you. So then he actually did the problem. Now in this case we go from moles to grams and it's a one step problem. Just keep that in mind because then he talked about those sig figs uh, and again I'm not too worried about sig figs. I like everything to be two decimal places so I would have done 19.62 grams here. Uh, but then he also did a challenging one. He went from grams to molecules and notice now there's a two step process. So it's going to be real important to understand our one step problems versus our two-step problems. So he also talked about that magic EE button and that magic EE button helps us especially with Avogadro's number when we're dealing with times 10 to an exponent and that exponent is so big. Now he did multiplying the top and then dividing the bottom. I like going in order because there's going to be many times when you're going to have multiple numbers on the top and multiple numbers on the bottom. And if you don't do it correctly in your calculator, uh, then things get messed up and you get the wrong answer. So I like to go in order. So if this is my setup, I'm going to divide, right, because that line means divide. Take my number, divide by one, multiply, then divide multiply then divide and then I'm going to have my equals. So that's something that if you want to you might want to pause and see if you can do it that way in your calculator and make sure you get the right answer. And then of course he gave you the answer. So did you go back then and try to figure out 200 grams going to molecules? I will give you a big hint. It is a two-step process uh, to conversion. So do you think you can figure that out? 
Well, hopefully you paused and you tried maybe the setup. So if we start out with the 200 grams of water, we're gonna go to moles using that molar mass that he did in the video. And then we're gonna use Avogadro's number to go to molecules. And I like to abbreviate molecules MLCS. So again, can you pause? Can you do the division and multiplying and the division and multiplying and the division and the equals in your calculator to get the answer? Hopefully you got that. And I want to remind you, we need to write out the times 10. I don't like his star and I don't like the E, right? We need to write out it correctly into scientific notation and how you would really see it. So off to your notes packet. Every year, contestants from all over the world travel to Harrison Hot Springs in British Columbia, Canada to compete in the World Championship Sand Sculpture Contest. Each contestant creates a beautiful work of art out of millions of tiny, tiny, tiny grains of sand. You can measure the amount of sand in a sculpture by counting the grains of sand, but wouldn't it be much easier to weigh the sand? In this section, you'll discover how chemists measure the amount of a substance using a unit called the mole. So again, if we look at counting sand, think about how small one tiny grain of sand would be and how long it would take you to actually count all of the grains of sand that make up the sand castle. So isn't it going to be much easier if we do it by weight? Hmm, so that brings me to my next question. What are the three methods for measuring the amount of something? So pause the video and think about the grocery store or, or like a Home Depot. Um, think about how are the three, three ways things are sold. Hopefully you came up with counting, weighing, and the volume. So if I look at the picture here, and these are three items that I could purchase in a store, which one would be sold by its weight, which one would be sold by its volume, and which one would be sold by counting? Hopefully you came up with bird seed is by weight, right? It even says here uh, net weight, and it's usually either by pounds or ounces. How about our paint? That would probably be by volume, right? You buy a gallon of paint or a pint of paint. And then, of course, I would buy 500 nails. That would be by counting. So the same thing happens when we're talking about things in chemistry. But first, we're going to talk about using that dimensional analysis. So for our practicing dimensional analysis, again, all we're doing is converting units. So in this case, we're going to go 0.2 bushels is one dozen. Hmm, that sounds like a conversion to me. And a dozen of apples has a mass of two kilograms. Huh, that sounds like another conversion. So it's asking, what is the mass of 0.5 bushel of atoms? So first, we're going to list the conversion they're giving us. Then we're going to figure out what unit do we really want. Then we're going to have a starting point. We're going to figure out those setup of the conversions. So again, once we set up the conversions, I want to remind you, you always deal with the units first, then you put in those numbers. And then, of course, finally, we're going to do the math. So what I would do is I would wait to hear everything. And I believe in your notes, there's a spot to write in the um, information. So first, let's think about those conversions. I kind of alluded to the 0.2 bushels of one dozen, and one dozen or a dozen means one dozen of apples gives us the two kilograms. So next is what unit do we want? Well, it says, what is the mass? That's going to be my question mark. And then um, what do, what's going to be our starting point? Well, again, we're going to go back to that bushel, right? The 0.5 bushel of atoms. Now we can set up the problem. Now knowing our two conversions, can we start at 0.5 bushels and get to mass of those uh, apples? So again, my starting point is going to be 0.5 bushels of atoms. I'm going to multiply by a conversion line. I'm going to divide by bushels of atoms, and I want to go to dozen of apples, right? That's my conversion they give us. Now I can put in the numbers that are associated with that. Not done yet, so I'm going to multiply by conversion. And again, my dozen of apples goes on the bottom, and a dozen is equal to my kilograms. So again, my units are first, and then I can put in those numbers. Now, can you pause the video and put this in your notes, as well as do the math and see if you can come up with an answer? Hopefully you paused. Hopefully you did the math correctly, right? Did we divide, then multiply, divide, then multiply, then divide, and got an answer of 
five kilograms. Hopefully that kind of makes sense and we'll get there, right? We'll get there just like we've gotten before. This is just a preview of what we're going to be doing with our dimensional analysis. All right, so can you think of any other number word associations? In other words, when I say to you dozen, we've already talked about that's being 12, but how about if I tell you a baker's dozen? Um, for those of you who bake or bakers, it's actually a 13 number, right? They always add an extra. So anytime you actually order a baker's dozen, they give you that extra dozen of eggs or they give you that extra loaf of bread. But how about if I said to you pear? If I say the word pair to you, what usually comes to mind? I don't know about you, but when I think of a pair, I think of two. And I'm sure there's others. There's many, many words that I would say to you, and you would automatically think of a number. Hmm. Well, when I say mole to you, you should think of this gigantic number. So pause the video, fill in those blanks, read as you write, and then play to hear my words. So. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is really 6022 and 20 zeros, I believe it is. 3, 6, 79, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 zeros. And this number written out this way versus the scientific way is 602 sextillion. Um, so what is this? This is really our unit that the chemists use for particles. And it equals exactly 12 grams of the carbon-12 isotope. How they got to that, uh, that's another story. But remember, everything is based off of a standard. And when we're dealing with masses, we can't have a standard being zero because everything has a mass. So that's why they chose carbon-12 to be that standard when we're relating things to the mole. Ha, 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 right? Lots of mole jokes out there. So I want you to understand just how astronomical this number truly is. If you count out a hundred, and now you would put 10 to the second there so you're getting an idea of our exponent. If you count out a hundred average size peas, you would find that they occupy uh, roughly the volume of a cubic inch. So if you take a box and it's one inch all around, you would fill up um, that box uh, with about a hundred of these peas. A million peas are just enough to fill an ordinary household refrigerator, and a billion peas will fill a whole house from cellar to attic. Thus, a trillion peas would fill a thousand houses. The number you might find in a medium-sized town. And a quadrillion peas would fill all the buildings in one of our larger cities like Philadelphia or Baltimore. Hmm. So can you imagine how small these peas are, but they're huge compared to atoms, right? And now just think about that exponent and what we're filling up with these peas. You can see that you will run out of buildings very soon at this rate. So let us try a larger measure. For instance, the state of Pennsylvania. Suppose there is a blizzard over Pennsylvania, but instead of snowing snow, it snows peas. We have Pennsylvania covered with a blanket of peas about four feet deep, all the way from New Jersey out to Ohio and all the way from Maryland to New York State. This blanket of peas drifts over the roads and banks up against the sides of the houses and covers all the fields and forests. Think of flying across the street, a state, sorry, flying across the state with the blanket of peas extending out as far as you can see. This would give you our next number, for there would be in this blanket about a quintillion, mm, we're only up to 10 to the 18 peas. Let's keep going. Imagine that this blizzard of peas falls over the entire land of the globe North America, South America, Europe, Australia, Asia, and Africa, so that all the continents are covered with peas four feet deep. This global blanket would contain six trillion. We're getting there, 10 to the 21st, six trillion peas. Then imagine that the oceans are frozen over and the blanket of peas covers the entire area of the earth. Go among the neighboring stars and collect 250 planets the size of the earth and cover each of these with a blanket of peas four feet deep. Ah, oh, then you finally have a septillion peas. Finally, go into the farthest reaches of the Milky Way and collect 250,000 planets, each the size of Earth. 
Cover each with these, a blanket of peas four feet deep, and then at last you will have a cotillion, 10 to the 27th peas, the number corresponding to the number of atoms in your body. Woohoo! All right, guys, so again, we're thinking of a mole as a measuring cup, and it holds that many items. So just like a case of soda holds that many sodas. All right, and there's Mr. Avogadro if you're interested in what he looks like and his full name. All right, guys, we will see you in class.